they may just try to do that. Captain Moore, is there is there any hesitation at all from the department standpoint about approving the No. Okay. That is my only question. I move that we approve a request. Oh, oh. one moment, please. Uh, at, at this point, if there's no other okay. questions, I would open up uh, the uh, floor to public comments regarding this matter. <coughs> if you're interested in making a comment, please approach the podium. State your name and address for the record. That being the case, entertain a motion. Okay. I move that we approve a request for a waiver of the distance limitation to allow for the sale of cereal malt beverages within 200 feet of a school, church, or library during the Festival of Trails event. Second. Motion, Freeman, second, Harrison, that we approve a request for a waiver of distance limitation to allow for the sale of cereal malt beverages during the Festival on the Trails event. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion carries. Uh, new business item number four. Consider approving a general retailer license allowing the Festival on the Trails Association to retail cereal malt beverages for consumption on the premises for their event to be held on June 8, 2013. Uh, again, I'm just going to start this one with asking if anyone has any questions. <coughs> Uh, with the council having no questions, I would ask if there are any, if there is anyone in the audience that would like to make public comment on new business item number four. That being the case, I would entertain a motion. I would like to move to approve a general retailer license allowing the Festival on the Trails Association to retail cereal mop beverages for consumption on the premises for Festival on the Trails. <coughs> Second. Uh, motion shoot. Second, Harrison, that we approve a general retailer license allowing the Festival on the Trails Association to retail cereal malt beverages uh, on the premises for the Festival on the Trails event. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion carries. New business item number five. Consider a rezoning request for First Light Church located on the north side of Santa Fe Street, near the intersection of Poplar Street, uh, Michael Hall. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, before you is a request to approve rezone of a parcel to R1, single family residential, and a final plat to provide for the construction of the church at this location. The 12 acre site is located at the intersection of Santa Fe, US 56 Highway, and Poplar Street. The site is the location of the phase of the Waverly Point subdivision that was approved but never developed. As you can see from this slide, next please. <coughs> A portion of the property is currently zoned CO, which is neighborhood commercial, with the balance zone R1. The rezone will provide for a cleaner and more legible zoning map. Next slide, please. On March 5, 2013, the Planning Commission approved a site plan for First Light Church. The approval of the site plan was made contingent upon the approval of this rezone request. Staff recommended the rezone as a condition because for future land use planning and zoning, it is best to not have split zoning on a parcel of land, and it is best to have identical zoning on contiguous lots approved under a single ordinance. Because of the condition on the site plan approval, denial of this rezone would render the site plan approval null and void. Site plan review approval requires uh, approval by the Planning Commission and does not require the approval of City Council. However, this is a condition of the site plan approval. The staff report that's included in the packet includes all the findings to support the criteria of a rezone application pursuant to Section 18.185.150 of the Municipal Code, and that's detailed in the staff report. Next. 
please. Final plat. At their April 23rd meeting, the Planning Commission considered and recommended approval of the proposed final plat. The plat contains one lot and one tract plus rights of way for future Poplar Street, also known as Buckeye Street. The staff report addresses the main issues related to this plat, with the primary, the primary issue being the reconfiguration of the street network from what has been approved with the Waverly Point subdivision and the U.S. corridor plan. Next, please. A little over one week ago with the weekly update, uh, staff provided the council with a memo that summarized the U.S. 56 corridor plan as it relates to this project and uh, also recaps a meeting we had with, with uh, neighboring property owners we held. Um, We invited over 50 property owners to attend that meeting. The meeting was not required of the process, but it seemed to be the appropriate thing to do considering that the plan was adopted by uh, Kansas Department of Transportation and uh, there was a, a road alignment that council was aware of, I believe from April 2012, with that road alignment being changed. Something about the U.S. corridor plan is important. It's a plan that's approved by KDOT. Um, the city is a stakeholder agency in that plan. Uh, we have discussed this with KDOT and they have told us that as the plan pretty much implies that the expectation is with those plans or those road alignments that are in the plan itself, those are rather conceptual in nature. The idea is that the actual road alignments will be determined uh, as a result of development and decisions made about land use development in the future. So basically what they were saying was this doesn't rise to the level of them needing to amend their, uh, their plan, the U.S. 56 corridor plan. So we had this meeting. Uh, the date was, I can't recall the date. It was uh, it was on a Thursday. It was a, it was a two weeks ago Thursday, um, this coming Thursday, and uh, we had about ten folks that attended. Uh, our our main reason, or our main thought, was that uh, there might be some concern about the realignment of Poplar Street because it was moving further to the east as a result of this project. The comments we received at the meeting were more focused on uh, what this did to people's access from US 56, primarily access to commercial property. What actually happens with, with the implementation of the US 56 corridor plan is still not known. Uh, the, that would be subject to further design. This project doesn't affect that. Uh, the concern was that there might be raised medians that prevent access, and we just don't know that at this point. That's well beyond the scope of what is happening currently. Um, so the general outcome of that meeting was there were very few concerns, none that were voiced about Poplar Street. The other uh, property owner that's affected by this change <coughs> in road alignment is the Meadowbrook Hospital to the south. And with this change in plans, it means a right in, right out. Could you go to the next slide, please? So I'm kind of ahead of some of these slides. So this is the road alignment that was approved previously with Waverly Point. Next, please. I think we can skip that one if someone has questions. So this was the alignment that was, this, this is just another way of showing the alignment. This is actually a page from the corridor plan and it shows the access and the alignment at uh, Middlebrook Hospital and going north into the subdivision. Next. So with the change in alignment, what that does is it means that there's a right in, right access, right in, right out access only off of Santa Fe uh, to the hospital. There's the option of going, of connecting hospital access directly to Poplar Street. And as you can see, Poplar moves to the east. Next, please. 